Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my show. This is Raj Sahu, the presenter of this video. I am recording this from India in a small hill station about 2500 feet above sea level. It has almost 7 to 8000 millimeter rains in a year but confined only to summer which has not begun. It starts in June and ends in September. In that time there's 7000 millimeters. So it's very gorgeous right now. It's cool because it's about 3000 feet height at this altitude. Very nice, picturesque. A lot of greenery from the monsoon which ends in September. And now it's March. So we are in the dry, nice season, sunny season. Guys, I wanted to discuss in this video about um, the Sabbath. And what did Jesus speak about Sabbath? Which ultimately takes us to the law, God's law. How do we do it? Because I have heard many people talking about Sabbath and that it's imperative to keep Sabbath. It's connected directly to salvation. Well, I have nothing against Sabbath. Remember that, guys. I say that with folded hands, especially to the Jewish brothers and sisters and all those of Hebrew roots or Messianic uh, Jews. Absolutely, keep Sabbath if you wish to. It's, it's, it's something very good. But is it connected directly to a salvation? As Jesus taught. I, my reference point is Jesus. My final point is also Christ. Jesus says in Matthew 28, 18, 20, All authority has been given to me, Jesus Christ. So make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to command everything, to obey everything I have commanded and truly I shall be with you till the end of the ages. So Jesus is the boss. He is our Messiah. He is our Lord. I think we should view Jesus in those that light. Rather than running here and there, especially to Paul, <laughs> the crafty deceiver, let us hear from Jesus what he talks about Sabbath. So guys, if, if you would like, uh, please do uh, stay till the end of the video. You, I think you will enjoy it. And can I have some um, interaction, your uh, feedback and your views, your thoughts? Because this has become a burning issue. Now that we have exposed Paul is a fake apostle, there are so many videos. Now many have come up. Raj Sao doesn't have to battle it alone with few others only. There are many. Praise God. This man has been uh, exposed, the deceiver Paul. But this is leading to another strange and difficult picture emerging. If Paul is a deceiver and that you've been not, you're not saved by grace through faith. Grace, of course, is a word Jesus never used in the Bible. You've not been saved by grace through faith. Then what does, because Jesus rejected both on the day of judgment, Matthew 25, 31, 46. He says very clearly six times on the um, Last Supper, if you love me, keep my commands. Six times. So obviously, then he says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you. And James's brother says, be doers of the word, not just hearers, or else you're just deceiving yourself. So there is abundance of evidence, including clinching ones of the last day judgment scenario where this was rejected of Paul. Saved by grace through faith was rejected. But what is happening is now that Paul is out of the way, now that Paul is out of the way, one would think or start thinking that everything has been resolved. But that's not the case, unfortunately. I, Raj Sahu, have not only shared as the Lord dictated, taught me to teach you. Or share with you would be a better word. I'm not a teacher. I'm a fellow believer, follower of Jesus Christ. I share, as he taught me, was all there. <laughs> and then gave me a revelation on top of, like he gave Paul some things special to Paul, nothing to me. He just pointed out at what is written in the Bible since 2000 years. That's about it. And it's so evident, so clear. And that's what I'm going to share. Because Sabbath is something, uh, like I said, the Messianic Jews and the 
<coughs> Hebrew root letters like would like to keep and it's connected with salvation I do not know if it is connected with salvation what is we will discover and I've I've shared that a, a number of times in my other videos but today I'm going to be concentrating on Sabbath a little more it's the fourth commandment of uh, God the Father out of the Ten Commandments because there is this question that if we are not believing Paul anymore because he was a deceiver now this is a known fact in the world thank you guys all brothers and sisters who have contributed in that and I have also put my heart and soul to more than 250 250 videos guys most of them call out this man a devil he's a devil's uh, boy his master stroke really Paul but I won't talk about Paul so what do we do go back to the law can we obey the entire law because Sabbath is the fourth one let me read out what does it say about the fourth law six days you shall labor and do all your work but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God in it you shall not do any work you nor your son nor your daughter nor your male servant nor your female servant nor your cattle nor your stranger who is within your gates so it's a very clear command but so are the other nine and but there are, is this the end of the law not at all there are 613 other uh, commandments also how many should we obey hmm? what does james say about this james 2:10 because on the one side, don't go to Paul, guys. Jesus has given the answer to all this. So don't run to Paul, then let's believe and go to heaven. That's not going to happen. All that will end is in condemnation. And it did. And Jesus pointed it out. I'll point that out later. Where did he say all that? What does James say? James, the brother of Jesus says this in James 2.10. So James is pointing out at the problem of this, keeping the entire law commandment by commandment. James says, and keep that in mind, for whoever, this is James 2 verse 10, for whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it, which is the truth. You can't keep selectively, guys, we cannot. Either we keep the whole thing or we don't keep it. And some people say, that uh, 613 have not to be obeyed, only the 10. So then who are we to uh, select that only these uh, 10 commandments are needed? What about 613? They were spoken for uh, without any reason or what by Father God, some of them directly through Moses, his man, his friend, the man of God, Moses, one of the most obedient human beings ever born on earth and one of the most humble ones. Salute. His memory makes me teary-eyed. Makes me cry. So wonderful was his great commitment to Father God. So should we reject what was... It was not Moses speaking, Father God speaking through Moses many times. So what should we obey? What should we not? Can we be saved without obeying the law? No. We cannot be saved. Take it for granted. And that's where Jesus comes in. And that is why it is important to read Jesus. Which we didn't. We ran after Paul. Paul the Pied Piper. Who charmed us. And gave us a fresh new. His own doctrine. Said by grace through faith. He replaced Jesus with the word grace. Jesus never uttered that word. According to any of the translations we have. Coming back to this. It is important to know then what to do on Sabbath and how to obey the entire law. Hmm? It is possible. That's the good news. For those who are getting stressed, do not, guys. Jesus was a complete teacher. He was an absolutely wonderful savior and son of God. He was the face of the great I am. He didn't leave nothing un incomplete. When he says it is finished, it was. The path was paved to salvation. Everything was taught. The problem rests with us. We have to take that onus and responsibility that we did not read and follow Jesus. We did not. Else this video was not needed what's being done today. They should have been there 2000 years back. It's not there today. What do we do now that this Paul has been exposed? Should we go back to the law? Yes, why not? But can you obey the law? Huh? My question to you is, all, keep all 613. Don't be selective. 
will be insulting the father huh? so how did jesus teach we'll come that to later but there is an occasion i would like to suggest uh, say before we go to how to obey the entire law as jesus taught us there is this uh, the lord of sabbath is an expression describing jesus which appears in three of the gospels matthew 12 1 8 mark 2 23 to 28 and luke 6 1 5 at that time this was a time where you know where jesus was teaching and pharisees were continually heckling him putting obstacles and stumbling blocks in the path of jesus and they were sabbath keepers and by their own standards they were law keepers also and yet this is what they were doing isn't that an irony we'll understand what is happening and why that happened i am not going against sabbath i am in favor of it i am i keep it a mild sabbath not a very like heavy legalistic sabbath no but i take a day off and keep sabbath on the day it was recommended saturday but does that have is connected with the salvation will quickly quickly no now keeping that in mind i am reading this okay guys bear with me you will get a, a lot from this hopefully praise god through his mercies tender mercies i am able to share at that time jesus went through the grain fields on the sabbath so he's walking through grain fields he's not sitting alone somewhere observing a day notice what he is doing because we have to follow suit so you can walk out you can go because he did a lot of healing on sabbath which was objected to by the pharisees and his disciples were hungry now they became hungry his disciples well i get hungry if i'm walking through fields <laughs> i walk through jungles a lot guys in indian jungles mm. and truly you get very <laughs> hungry by the time that 2 3 hour walk is over and his disciples were hungry and began to pluck head of grains to eat and when the pharisee saw it that these guys are not sitting home or taking a break they're eating through fields possibly belonging to some other people obviously and the pharisee saw it and they said look to jesus they said your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the sabbath what did jesus reply but jesus said to them have you not read that david did what david did when he was hungry he and those who were with him how he entered the house of god and ate the show bread which was not lawful for him to eat not for those who were with him but only for the priests that bread consecrated bread was bread was only for the priests but david had eaten but it wasn't held illegal by father god he was the man after god's heart or have you not read in the law it says jesus that on the sabbath the priests in the temple profane or defile the sabbath and are yet blameless yet i say to you that in this place there is one greater than the temple itself is talking about himself now but if you had known what this means i desire mercy and not sacrifice you would not have condemned the innocent and the guiltless and then he says for the son of man is also the lord of the sabbath i am the boss of this also he say and god of this also what sabbath and what is what does what does our lord of the sabbath say this what you just heard not everything is illegal on sabbath but to get more out of it there is more in mark i will read an extra the same thing is again described in mark but there is an additional information which i will share with you so you may understand the same thing he says in mark it's uh, i'll give you the mark verses are um, uh, 23 to 27 okay mark is mark 2 23 to 28 is the same account except there is one additional piece of information which is vital because after he says 
after eating that uh, the house of god and ate the david and when he is the same story and I'm, it's i'm not going to repeat it so please read that but the additional piece of information here is and jesus said to them after he narrates the same story what's in matthew is repeated in mark he says something very important the sabbath was made for man but not the not the man for the sabbath see guys if you are going to let it us become pharisees there is a danger of becoming pharisees it's called the it's called legalism i know paulians have rejected paulians are those who <laughs> accept and believe everything of paul they call everything legalism that is also not the case is partly correct you know why jesus is saying that why is he, why am i saying he's saying the sabbath was made for man and not man for sabbath he pointed about the priests he pointed about david breaking the thing yet it was not broken why is he saying all this we will come to no and then there is luke 6 15 recounts the same account gives no other information the two things very important to know here is that the sabbath was made for man not made for man was not made for sabbath and that jesus is the lord of sabbath also and therefore what we will hear later on from this mouth which was taught to me by father god i'm sharing with you is what is the case is that is how we need to obey the entire law and the teachings of the prophet those who have seen some of my videos already know it so guys coming back to sabbath remember all this has been given in the primary first phase of father god pronouncing or sharing his law and giving his law would be the best word which is an eternal law forever and ever say psalms 119 say psalms 1711 say psalms 1178 says jesus christ himself matthew 5 16 you know 17 18 is it yes matthew 5 17 18 that the whole universe has to crash burn and disappear before the least bit of the law can ever go it is an eternal law says jesus says david and it has to be obeyed in fact jesus says in uh, matthew 4 verse 4 that man does not live on bread alone but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of god and the law was proceeding from the mouth of god Deuteronomy 9:10 where in Mount Sinai all this the law the 10 commandments we have to live by them and the other law we have to obey them and that's why it's imperative to understand what Jesus how Jesus taught all right and we're coming to that this is to help you understand the complexity of the matter because there are some false teacher which are pointing back at obeying the law they're trying to become pharisees do not fall into that trap i say again do not fall into the trap of pharisees they were the ones who ended up murdering jesus on the cross this is the truth they did that we know the truth right who planned who planned the murder of jesus who trapped him who plotted him who held that kangaroo court that hideous night where jesus christ our lord was condemned pharisees the ducies the scribes so do not fall into that trap and go back and become like them they are under a condemnation if you do not trust me go to matthew 23 and read the seven vows slash curses jesus has levied on them or laid on them for a reason these are the same people who are heckling jesus continually thinking he is breaking the law no he was fulfilling it and he you will now hear some of you will thank father god that you got a chance to hear this video these are all words of jesus cannot be changed guys also this is very disturbing that paul was uh, exposed so it's the best chance to obey jesus now instead of doing that we are going back to the law law like i said is eternal and has to be obeyed but how is the question covering a lot of ground now now we are coming to the crux of the matter and that includes sabbath also we just heard that man is not made for the sabbath has not been made for man but <laughs> man was not made for sabbath but sabbath for man beg your pardon that is the truth sabbath was 
made for man, not man for the Sabbath. That's 27th verse in that um, Matthew's, uh, Matthew, in Matthew he says, or uh, Mark 2, 27, beg your pardon. That's where Jesus revealed, Mark 2, 27. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And he, earlier on we discovered, he calls himself the Lord of the Sabbath. So this is what he's telling us. And now you will know why. Now you will know how to obey the entire law. See, the same Pharisees, I will not blame them for everything. They ask questions which provoked Jesus to give out a lot of information to us. And that's how it got recorded. And that's how we'll understand what Jesus talks. This is again a question by the Pharisees. This is a Pharisee asking Jesus a question which will give us the answer we are looking for and is therefore the crux of this video. It is the crux of salvation also. Remember that guys, this is the very essence of salvation and now you are getting to hear it in, in case you didn't. Alright, I try to make it a point in some of my videos. Ratsaw has not come here to point out at the deceptions of Apostle Paul, but also to point out at what Jesus taught will get us to be saved on the last day. And it was not through obeying law, like one after the other, uh, rather the, yes, the whole law or the commandments one after the other. But there was another way, a better way. And it was not saved by grace through faith. That was a lie to deceive us so that we are condemned on the last day by doing nothing, which is believing. So here is this guy. It's a Pharisees who got together. And one of them, an expert in the law, tested Jesus Christ with this question. What is the question? Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Now they knew the law. Of course, they were Pharisees and teachers of the law. They knew the law like the back of their hand. Jesus replied, and hear this with rapt attention. I beg you guys, you get a lot of uh, answers through this. And that's our lovely Lord Jesus for you, leaving nothing unaccomplished. He accomplished everything shared everything he had come to share. Jesus replied, what? what? What is the question again? Which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus reply, replied, love the Lord. Now hear this guys. It's from Deuteronomy 6 verse 5. He's not even pointing at the 10 commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Wholeheartedly leave nothing wholeheartedly love God this is he calls this is the first and the greatest commandment which doesn't even feature in the Ten Commandments guys it does not so you see or specifically it does not in express terms as lawyers would say it does not but Jesus is not giving you in express terms what is the greatest commandment of the law Love God with all your heart, might and soul. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second one is like this. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now where is the love your neighbor as yourself? That is in Leviticus 19.18. Again out of the Ten Commandments. This is not there in the Ten Commandments, is it? It's not. And then what does he say in verse 40? We are on reading Matthew 22, 37 to 40. What does verse 40 say? This is very important. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. In simple words, this is the essence of the entire law and everything the prophets, including Christ Jesus, your Lord, has taught this then is the essence. Got it guys? And this is how it is obeyed. What? The entire law. Including the 613. Now you know. Cat is out of the bag. Isn't it? Now we know the secret which should never have been. For those who do not know. Or those who are trying to go. You'll end up being like exactly like the Jews were under the Pharisees. Heavy burden lay on them. This upon this. But Jesus taught us very clearly because it cannot be obeyed. Then why was it given? See guys, the analogy I will use is of a movie. Have you gone to movies? I'm sure. I, I love movies. 
and Indian movies a little more because it's my language, Hindi movies. There's an intermission in the movies because Hindi movies are longer. Some American movies are very long too. I've seen three and a half hour movies. So there's a break. It's called interval or intermission where you go out and have pop popcorn and the local dishes of India. Spend some money. <laughs> now, let's say Jack. Our friend Jack goes to a movie, a very nice movie. He walks into the theater, sees the movie, enjoys the movie. Uh, in midway, called the interval, when it breaks, the movie breaks for a 10 minute break while you go have your pop popcorn, coke or whatever you like. But he doesn't come in. Hear carefully guys what I'm trying to say. This is a great uh, bearing on our salvation. He walks out of the theater, Jack. Jack is a fictitious character. This is an analogy I'm giving. Jack pre starts presuming the end now because he had had one and a half hours of the movie for some reason and whatever that reason, maybe he walks out of the theater and misses out the next half. That's the New Testament, guys. We don't want to include Jesus. He's also the finale. Typically, the second half carries the finale, not the first. It is the completion. The second half of any movie is the completion of the story. Not half story is half lie. Then it becomes. Because, see, if you're going to rely only on one and then exclude Jesus, it becomes a lie. Because Jesus is not being quoted. He's the fulfillment of the law. He says that I have not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. This is how it is fulfilled, guys. You have that in front of you now. What does it say? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second one is like this. Love your neighbor as yourself. And both are out of those ten, beyond those ten commandments. They are not part of that. And then he proceeds to say something extremely vital and crucial to our salvation. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. In other things, everything stands fulfilled when you love God and the fellow human being. That's it. And that is then the salvation doctrine of our lovely Lord Jesus Christ. Love God, love others. Love God, love others. Love God, love others. Love God, love others. Why is it so hard to understand? I do not know. And I'm very upset. Why do we reject Jesus again and again? Why cannot we digest this was the teaching of Jesus? Do you want a confirmation? I'll give you guys more than once. Matthew 7, 12. What does it say? The golden rule. Do unto others as you would want them to do to you. Do to others as you would want them to do to you. For this is the law and the prophets all things covered if you want to break it down please do it i would do it by all means to understand and absorb it is the same thing he's speaking in different words matthew 22 37 40 says love god love others this is all he's saying again do to others as you would want them to do to you including father god you, you want him to save you, then go and love God and love others. He's saying do to others as you would want them to do to you. Think about what do you want others to do to you, guys. I want others to love me, respect me, be nice to me. Then he says, go do these things. Because this is the fulfillment. This is the law. How many times should we ask Jesus the same question? You didn't tell us how to obey. Yeah, he's telling you in Matthew 22, 37, 40. He's telling you in Matthew 7, 12. Telling us, I'm included in the whole thing. I'm in the same boat as you are, guys. And we are not saved till the judgment day occurs. Matthew 25, 31, 46. Luke, I beg your pardon, Revelation 20, 11 to 15. In both of these, only works were considered. And here is more revelation. And what revelation is this when it was there from 2000 years? It's just pointing at it. See, Revelation 20, 11, 15 says very clearly, books were opened and each person got according to what they had done. It was works-based salvation. Had to be. You have to obey the Lord and <laughs> that's a lot of work. 
However, Matthew 25, 31, 46 tells us what kind of works is he looking at. Obeying one after the other. Mm -hmm. All the commandments, no. He was, work, he was looking at what he taught. Look at our good teacher Jesus. Works of loving kindness. What he does, just teach, love God, love others. Whoever had those love, loving kindness in them, works of loving compassion. I won't uh, read out the whole thing, were saved, they were called the sheep. But those who just believed in Jesus and had no works of loving compassion or kindness were rejected. There's one word for loving kindness in India, or loving compassion rather, it's called Karuna, K-A-R-U-N-A. -A. Sounds like Corona, but it's not. I tried to tell myself, Rajesh, deal with Karuna, 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 Karuna. I've tried to feed myself on this. Because if I don't have karuna, compassion on others, I will not get compassion. Because, see, this is a God-founded principle in Ezekiel. What you sow, you shall reap, and the sinning soul must die. Finally, we get back what we have given. That is why Jesus taught us, love God, love others, love God. He wanted us to sow well. Got this? Why did John say, whoever does not learn to love, does not know God, for God is love. First John 4, 8. First John 4, 16, John repeats, it was all about love. But I'll give you a third instance again, that it's all about loving God and loving the fellow human being. Because he explains in Luke 10, 25 to 32, where he talks about the Good Samaritan story. Jesus gives us that parable and he explains to us, we have to be the good Samaritans because here is what happened. I'll give you in brief because this will go to 38, 39 minutes as it is it's going. I hope you will have the uh, patience to go through. This is very important, guys. What happened was when again an uh, expert of the law, expert of the law came to Jesus to test him. Again, a Pharisee. And he's, he asked Jesus, what must I do, teacher? To be saved isn't that a very important question i'm glad he asked that what did jesus reply jesus says to him i'm paraphrasing all this luke 10 20 or summarizing luke 10 25 to 28 this encounter or sort of um, dialogue takes place so jesus says you are a teacher of the law how do you read the law if you see, Jesus goes back to the law. Now his question is about salvation. What will save me? Jesus points back at the, at the expert of the law. How do you read the law? What is your inference in simple terms from the law? What does it tell you? He says, you know what? This is fantastic. It gives me the goosebumps. Love God with all your heart, might and soul, says this expert of the law. Because he teaches every day, he understands a little bit. Love God with all your heart, might and soul, Deuteronomy 6, 5. And then he says, love your neighbor as yourself. What is that? 1918, Leviticus. He says that. That was how he read. Exactly as Jesus says. You know what Jesus says? Thumbs up. He gives him a thumbs up. He says, do this and you shall live. In other words, you will be saved by doing this. What? Doing what? By loving God, loving others. Now, this was the soul of Bible, guys, which we lost the message. First of all, due to Pauline deceptions. And the new teachers are not able to, who, who are able to teach. And praise God. Thank you for them. You guys, I'm extremely grateful to you for exposing the false apostles. So that we may... Now start studying Jesus for the first time in all seriousness and in entirety. Every word of Jesus is gold. That words in oftentimes in red letters, red ink. Those words of Jesus Christ are pure gold because they summarize the Bible. They tell you how to obey. Now you know it. By watching this video, you know. How many times should we reject Jesus? Tell me. He's telling now three times. Matthew 22, 37, 40. 22, 37, 40, Matthew 7, 12, the golden rule. And now in Luke 10, 25, 28. How many times will he say? 
that you will be saved by this because you obey the entire law and the teachings of the prophets. Now I'll give you the clinching evidence, Matthew 25, 31, 46. Only the good Samaritans were saved, guys. Because they practiced loving compassion in the whole process. They had kept the entire law and the teaching. They had obeyed. Don't go the Pharisee way, guys. Do not end up becoming a victim to such teachers who are telling you obey laws one by one. You'll get lost and frustrated and then you might even run away from this faith. Trust in Jesus. Believe and accept his words. Practice loving kindness. See, why is this all happening? Or why was law, law given? Most don't even know. It was given for us to learn to love. Because God is love. He couldn't have taught otherwise anything else. Jesus also the same. Now you know why he's a true reflection of his father. Completion of his father's word and that's his own word father and son are one john 10 30 but they are love and that is why he taught us how to complete and fulfill the entire obedience requirement of the law which was given for us to learn to love but the pharisees were not getting it they got involved in the legal legalist or legalistic aspect of the law forgetting the essence the spirit was love they missed it but one of them knew it Luke 10 25 20 he was also Pharisee and he knew it how I want to ask you how don't have to rely only on Jesus this guy also seems to be knowing it but for the most parts people the they had got lost because human desire is to control other institutionalize everything and gain superior positions. We know what Pharisees were doing. In the whole process, they had lost the soul, the sense of law, which was loving kindness, karuna. I say that only to remind you, don't have to remember this word. Karuna has two in one words, two mixed in one. It's a beautiful Sanskrit Hindi word, which means loving, compassion, and guys, if you read Matthew 25, 31, 46, the people who were saved were the ones who had loving kindness in them. They had gone out of the way like the good Samaritans or the altruists. They were the altruists who were saved. If you don't like that word, good Samaritan, be a good Samaritan. Have love and compassion. Have understand and appreciate the pain of others. This is how... The universe works. It doesn't work on I, me and myself, but what about others as Jesus did? We are just mimicking Jesus when we do this. We are following what he did. Pick up the cross, deny the flesh and follow me. Else you are not even worthy of being my disciples, he says, Matthew 10, 38. Right? So guys, I hope you got it amply, clearly or abundantly clearly today that it was all about love. Because Solomon reveals, uh, Proverbs 10, 12, love covers all sin. Love is the diametric opposite of what? Sin. Do you see why God is love? Because it's the opposite. <laughs> he hates sin. <laughs> Even Jesus is the most beautiful thing ever. Godly love, unconditional love. Try to practice that. It's one of the most beautiful things. If you cannot love all people, bless them. Blessing is an act of love. Forgive them for those who have hurt you. It is an act of love. But love per se is not going and hugging people and shouting and screaming. No. It's understanding the pain of others. Being compassionate up to, uh, or about others and to others as well. Just not about me. but I, I'm not talking about me but I'm talking about us. That we start thinking about others also. They are also made in the image and likeness of God. We have to go back to the basics. See, the completion of the Bible, the message, and the law was love. Law, love, law, love. Law was given for us to learn to love. Can anybody deny this? If you're denying what I'm teaching, you're denying Jesus. And the last day judgment scenario, can it be changed? Matthew 25, 31, 46, only the good Samaritans were saved and nobody else. And no other criteria was given. Because they had fulfilled the law. We've read that three times, guys. 
How many times is the Messiah going to tell us? If he asks us this question, didn't I tell you again and again? Why didn't you practice loving compassion? Because those guys exactly said the same thing. We didn't see you, Jesus, else we would have done this, this and that for you. He said, whatever you have not done for these least brothers of mine, you did not do for me. Now get out of my sight. And he condemned them. So get out of my sight has been added by me. <laughs> I get passionate, guys. But that's what happened. He said, out. And he called the good Samaritan righteous. Only the righteous will be saved, guys. Nobody else. Let's wrap this up. All right. I hope you got a lot from this. The law was given us for to learn to love. The second other time it's written the same thing that it covers all sin is Peter says, First Peter 4 verse 8, love covers a multitude of sin. So when we practice loving kindness, our sins are automatically starting, start to get erased. We get blessings of the law. We have obeyed the entire law and the teachings of the prophets, including Christ. Now you're good to go into heaven. Because Jesus says it was always made for ones like you, who? The good Samaritan. Right? This is how the whole thing is. The whole law was fulfilled, including Sabbath. I'm now coming back to Sabbath. I'm not against it. I'm for it. But what must start with one day has to end up 24-7 Sabbath, guys. Remember that. And that spiritual Sabbath in your heart, you become Christ conscious. Have you heard of this word? Probably, possibly not. You become Christ conscious or God conscious that he is always within you, without you. He says that the kingdom of heaven is within you. He is here, outside. He fills the whole cavity of universe. And when you start uh, getting conscious that he is around me, inside me all the time, then it will become a 24-7 Sabbath. No teacher in any school starts, let's say you are doing MD and becoming a doctor. Will they teach a fifth, uh, five-year student or six-year-old uh, second grader things of what they teach in MD class or college? They cannot. The ch children won't understand. That's how this all started. But unfortunately, we were being dragged back to the first and second grades to keep the law. No, its, it's entirety is obeyed in loving kindness because God is love. Remember that. His law defines God. It is the heart of God and God is love. You got, guys, I hope I have been able to connect the dots for you. Bottom line is, turn a fear God, turn away from sin, turn to righteousness, practicing loving kindness with everyone. If you cannot love everybody, at least bless them. It doesn't take much to bless everybody. I make a sh short prayer before I go to bed as many times as I remember. May all that who live be blessed, Lord, and be joyful. May all be blessed. May all human beings and all others, even animals I started, all come from God. His breath created all, all the whole universe I bless before I go to sleep. It's a two-minute prayer. I I remind him of my love as Jesus says, love God and I bless all people. That's it. And if you can't do it, then start today. Everything comes with practice. Start praying blessings over all. Thank you guys. This was then today's uh, message. Hopefully you will ponder it. You will contemplate on what I shared with you. It will all point to love and compassion. Karuna. That was the reason Bible was given. Now this project earth is coming to an end. It's coming to an end now. All the signs are on. And then the judgment will take place. And only those who practice loving compassion will be saved. It cannot change for you and me. The Bible will still remain. It's recorded there. Remember guys, in the Garden of Eden, Father God planted two kids. Fast forward to Revelation, he'll walk with hundreds of thousands who practice loving compassion. Project Earth from standpoint of God was very successful. It has a wonderful end. And these people will rule with Father God, his universe forever. Then there'll be other projects. It says God is always working and so will shall we be. 
but this time there will be no pain, no disease, no death, no enemies. We will be working for Father God. Trusted with little will be trusted with much. Whoever practice loving compassion wins his heart because now you are not only doing for others, you started thinking of. Uh, not only for yourselves but others as well. Thank you and God bless you all. Bye for now.